Oh, football is here. I'm so excited. There is football today. There are matchups to talk about, things that matter for your lineup. Who should you start? Who should you sit? Who's the crazy person behind the curtain? Oh, it's the Wizard of Oz, Antonio Brown. There is so much on this episode. You have to check it out. Hey, Foot Clan, the drafts are over. Football is here. It is time to get it on. Yeah, you know what else baby. you can do? You can play some DFS. If you are into that, we've got you covered as well with our ultimate DFS pass. It's got our rankings. It's got expert advice from stellar people in the community. We're talking Jake Seeley, Robert Waziak, Chris Meany, incredible things, a lineup optimizer. The DFS pass is bigger and better than ever. Go check it out at DFSPass.com. Today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Muggsy Jeans. You've heard me talk about them, the most comfortable men's jeans ever made. That's not an exaggeration. Muggsy's high-tech fabrics are so soft and flexible, they literally feel as comfortable as sweatpants. They're also all I have. Do your legs a favor and head to Muggsy.com to grab your own pair of ridiculously comfortable jeans today. Listeners can use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. That's M-U-G-S-Y dot com with the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off your pair of Muggsy jeans. Uh, this is D.D. Westbrook here with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Hey, hey, hey. Throwing in a few lyrics for the theme song today. <laughs> Those welcome are actually in. the words. That people don't know this. Well, you did write it, so. People don't know that the fantasy footballer's theme song <laughs> has, it has words. It's called, it's football time. Yeah, That's the name of the song. And that's the, that's it. That's it. You just you fit it in where you can fit it in, and then scream, "Hey, hey!" <laughs> <laughs> it's um, a Billboard top five hundred. Yes. Welcome into the show, jam packed today. Super Bowl picks, fantasy forecast, starts of the week, the boom boom kicker. Oh, football burying is, the lead. There. Football is back. It's Thursday, September fifth. Some people know it as the debut of the NFL season. Others know it as Michael Keaton's birthday. Ooh, I love Michael Keaton. Happy I do birthday. too. Yeah, so I'm not surprised with our illustrious history with Michael Keaton that he would choose to move his birthday to the day in which the NFL season begins. So thank you for that. It's good if, of you. And if you don't realize, people out there, if you're new to the show, Michael Keaton tweeted at us once. He did. He did, and he is now my favorite. He's also <laughs> in the set. He is. Look around. <laughs> Look around you. Hiding in the shadows. So excited. Today, the quick question. We're going Super Bowl picks. The season starts today. Let's do it. Jason. Right. I'll, wow. I'll hop in here first because I'm Goodness going. Goodness gracious. We, I, I didn't see your guys' picks. I and, know. And I feel like i got to change it. Just you, well, you got time because I'm going to talk. All right. Um, I am going with the two saddest stories you could say from last year. Two teams that many people believe should have been in the Super Bowl and were basically a play away each. I believe that the Saints will get there from the NFC, and the Chiefs will get there from the AFC. I have the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl over Drew Brees on his swung. Swan. Swung? <laughs> Stop looking at me, swung. <laughs> on his swan song season. Uh, okay, all right. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going with a Doug Peterson, Andy Reid Super Bowl matchup. Oh, it's personal. I told you many months ago I can see the future. The Eagles are going to win the Super Bowl. They're going to do it over... The Kansas City Chiefs. The student has and become the master. The Eagles last year were the objectively most injured team in football. And they're going to bounce back in a big way. Carson Wentz, redemption, and the uh the student will become the master. Mm. Doug Peterson mm. will will beat Andy Reid in the playoffs, and I've got the Eagles. 
All right, well, I'm going with an offense versus defense showdown. Of course. It's also an Andy Reid showdown because I got the Bears taking on the Chiefs, so it would be Matt Nagy, the student, <laughs> loses to the master. I'm taking the offense. I'm taking the Chiefs to defeat Chicago in the Super Bowl. It's really a shame that all three of us have the Chiefs here because yes. we all know it's going to be the Patriots. <laughs> Look, I just couldn't, I want Andy I couldn't do it. I picked the Eagles. I'd love to see Andy Reid get one. Just I want to see a happy Andy Reid at some point there at is, the end of a season. There's no coach who deserves a Super Bowl more than Andy Reid, but it, what Andy Reid is great at is is, you know, compared to what he is terrible at, and that is in-game management that matters a lot in those playoff games. That's that's why yeah, I've Andy, got the Saints. I know. Well, look, Mr. Reed, I know you're listening. Hire, Obvious, obviously, hire someone to manage the clock. Yes. Just the last two Please. minutes. Please, you can do the rest. But the last two minutes, hand that off to an intern. It literally could be a kid, a teenager who plays <laughs> Madden, because they will know what to do. Uh, that's good advice, Mike. Um, you can follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers or on Instagram. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. I mentioned this to the Foot Clan over at jointhefoot.com. We are so excited for the new year. We're also going to be giving you more behind the scenes access to Foot Clan headquarters, and we're going to be doing water bet videos. Uh, we make bets throughout the year. Uh, Al Borland himself is going to be responsible for making sure we carry those out. We've got a whole new set for the water bets. Um, and so you'll see Jason getting wet over and over and over again as he spins the wheel of water in defeat. Hmm. Interesting take. Uh, <laughs> I will say this. Well, there's only one of us who has already lost the water bet. That's tr that is true. That is true. But many victories are on the way. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, it's not how you start, how you finish. Is that? That's, that's right. The, that's right. Uh, thank you for everybody who's subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, we're ad free on Stitcher Premium. Uh, we're on Google Podcasts. Everywhere you listen to podcasts, you, you can find us. Yeah. And we appreciate the subscriptions, the reviews, all the support of the show. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right, Mike. End of day yesterday. Mike looked over with his very somewhat ghastly, depressed uh, facial expression and said, yes. did you see Stefan Diggs missed practice on Wednesday with a hamstring? Come on, man. Do you have any new information about this uh, absence? I do not. I uh, I expect Stefan Diggs to play. Like This is just a, to me, a, all right, maybe he tweaked it a little bit. It's feeling a little wonky let's sit him down let him rest before the the big debut but Stefan Diggs biggest problem is his football or his body doesn't like to play football and he frequently misses games he gets nicked up he gets banged up and it's to to start the season this way is it sucks it's it, frustrating it, it feels different because it's going into week one in the middle of the year what we would be saying is you never like late additions to the injury report guys that right. weren't injured and now it's new that means this is a fresh injury it so, concerns me yeah that's I, what i, I, think I agree he's in jeopardy you think of jeopardy of missing of missing week one i think it's in the yeah i mean you you need to pay attention mike sunday morning how do they find out what's going on oh well, that's that's a great transition yeah every every sunday if you're new to the show if you are if you're new to the show you're going to find out about it if you've been a listener of the show we're back. Sunday Live will be happening. I will be live streaming, answering news notes, uh, last second start sit questions. You'll get to see me tilt. Yes. That's usually people's favorite part as I make my own lineup decisions and I'm freaking out. But that happens every Sunday and we do that an hour before kickoff. Periscope, YouTube, Instagram. I just, Twitter, wherever, Twitch, everywhere. Yeah, where, wherever you consume streaming content it will be there so we'll know about stefan diggs you'll have to monitor that we'll give you an Indeed. update tomorrow as well before the weekend uh deshaun jackson it's been confirmed he will play in week one against the redskins i'm not personally very excited to play deshaun jackson week one i own i have him in a lot of leagues i got him late i like him over the course of the season i'm not as enthusiastic coming off the finger injury 
as 10-point favorites against the Washington Redskins. They may they might not need to do a whole lot through the air over the second half of the game, and with the finger injury, I'm pivoting in most of my leagues. How do you guys feel about D-Jax? Uh, 100% the same. I mean, that's not to say he couldn't catch a long bomb touchdown, but you know, you're taking in as much information as you can on every player, and I prefer my players who catch the ball to not have broken fingers. It's one of my Just call me crazy. top tips. Uh, Doug Peterson told reporters the Eagles will continue to utilize a committee system at running back. He said, for us here, it's worked. We know they have Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders, Darren Sproles, and Corey Clement on the roster right now. Uh, it's, it's tough to argue with Doug Peterson here on the basis of the success he's had utilizing a committee and with the team's success. That being said, I think the better player will dominate snaps at some point. I think that player is Miles Sanders. And a lot of it's going to come down to who actually gets the red zone work. Like they, they tried out Corey Clement at one point. It just didn't work out. If Miles Sanders can earn that role, or maybe he starts the season with it, that's where the true value will come. The Chargers... Head coach Anthony Lynn plans to utilize multiple running backs ahead of the week one matchup. We know this. Yeah, nothing Eckler, new. Eckler, Justin Jackson. I think you could play either. I mean, you you, yes. you you could play either player this week. In moving forward, you're going to be be playing a little bit of roulette when it comes to touchdowns there. I think Justin Jackson's probably the safer bet to score. Eckler's the safer bet to get more passing work, which might be more valuable in most leagues. And I would also say – Probably more carries. The games where both of them played without Melvin Gordon last year, it was Austin Eckler getting the majority of the work with Justin Jackson, uh, certainly getting enough work to be a fantasy star. But I view Austin Eckler pretty much as a must start this week, in a, you know, when they're favored at home, um, and Justin Jackson as a could start. And then we kind of know this, but offensive coordinator of the Buffalo Bills, Brian DeBowl, said that Frank Gore, Devin Singletary, and TJ Yeldon will each have roles this season. We talked a lot about the post LaShawn McCoy Buffalo Bills backfield and the fact that this is going to be the case. TJ Yeldon is going to steal re receiving work. Yes. He's been a proficient pass catcher in the NFL. Devin Singletary will have a role. Frank Gore as well. And they said, look, they're all going to have roles. They're all going to be defined on what they can do on a week to week basis predictability is going to be a challenge here to start the season. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's somewhat similar to the Eagles situation, right, where, well, yeah, it's a committee, but hopefully the talent will win out. I think Miles Sanders, Devin Singletary, these aren't guys necessarily that you're wanting to start week one, but as the, the weeks go on, they could just work themselves more into a necessity for the offense. To, they more could difficult force to the hand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if it's difficult to take you off the field, then you stay on it. Yeah, no question. And the nice thing about Singletary is that he is uh, versatile. He can do the thing. You know, Gore is going to have more of a, a early down work. Yeldon, uh, you, you'll be looking at two-minute drills and things like that too. You know, which guy gets on the field during those crucial, um, you know, downs. So that's it for news and notes. In, and, uh, in or out tomorrow, which is our injury breakdown. It'll be on tomorrow's show heading into the weekend. We'll put out the game day alerts one hour before on Sunday as well. You just heard Mike will be live Sunday morning, and we'll get you up to date at the last minute. Uh, news and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Do not miss a single piece of impactful fantasy football news. Download the free Sleeper app today. Oh, the Megalo Bowl is in the books, guys. We have breaking news. <laughs> I'm not hitting the button. It's not. It's uh, well. I was it's accused. Not NFL news. I was accused that I was the only one who's lost a water bet so far. In fact, each of us have already won a water bet so far. We will be paying those out on YouTube soon. So YouTube.com/slash Fantasy Footballers. It looks like Mike and I bet apparently in February. <laughs> oh, on, February bets. on who would have a higher average draft position in Joku or Ingram. Now, was this before? The Odell Beckham Jr. trade? Uh, maybe. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Mike wins. <laughs> uh, Ingram definitely had a higher ADP. And then, uh, Jason, you, you you bet that Rashard Matthews would make the Saints roster mm, for some reason. Those early bets. He did not. And then Damian Williams' ADP will be back of the first. Mike, you said yes. Jason said no. Jason wins that one. 
as Damian Williams dropped out of the first round and out of our hearts and minds over the last week. Speak for yourself. Yeah, he's still in yours. So uh, we've got starts of the week coming up. We're going to get into the breakdowns right now. Man, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. We're going to get real it's football, football tonight. Time. I think they should be hey. scheduling hey. these hey. games on Thursday. Hey. With the highest over-unders. They should let Vegas evaluate, Ooh. then oh. move the highest over-under to Thursday. That is actually a great idea. The, that, because this is going to be a low-scoring game tonight. Here's here's why that wouldn't work. Because basically, the Chiefs would be on every Thursday. It doesn't matter. Works for me. The, and the NFL. Fantasy Forecast. Very rude. Uh, I apologize. Very rude. For nothing. I mean, the NFL loves offense because the consumer loves offense. The NFL loves defense, Mike. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh offense. man. All right, let's start our first fantasy forecast of the year. We talked about the Packers and Bears yesterday. And if reminder, if you have a Packer or a Bear, get them out of your flex. Yes. Don't have a situation where... You're counting on Stephon Diggs to play on Sunday, and then you've screwed yourself over by playing one of your Packers in the flex, and, and they can't fit him in. There are more and more leagues with multiple flex positions as well. So, you know, it's very likely that you have a Packer or Bear in that flex. Put them into a, a, a regular positional roster spot. Give yourself the ability to pivot, especially in week one. Deshaun Jackson, maybe you don't want to play him. Robbie Anderson, tough matchup. Yeah. Should be out there, but, you know, do you want to deal with that? And this is this is a matchup that's just rife with flex level players. The Tariq Cohens, Allen Robinsons, who are your wide receiver three or maybe four. Your uh, your bad matchups with Aaron Jones. It doesn't matter if they're not as good as your starters. Put them into the main role. And I will say this: when we go through matchups for Week One, it is a different ball game than the majority of the season. You know, we have last year's stats to go on. Last year is more descriptive than predictive for a lot of these things. Yes, we know, look, the Bears, are they going to be a top third defense? Probably. Are they going to be what they were last year now that they don't have Vic Fangio as defensive coordinator? Maybe not. We don't know that. So we, we don't have this year's information to go on. Uh, we don't know a lot of usage. There's a lot more questions in week one. That's the kind of stuff I'm going to bring up in these matchups is what are we watching for? What happens if uh, X, Y, and Z happens? What does it mean for the rest of the fantasy football season? And we can't overreact to week one either. No, you know, it's hard. You it's know, if Adam Humphreys catches 10 passes in week one. Oh, that's happening. That doesn't mean he's going to be a PPR machine for the rest of the season. It just means that those that like him will take a victory lap in week one. And that's the most fun. important part they're is fun. the victory laps. Uh, the Tennessee Titans take on the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. The Browns are five and a half point favorites. Vegas has this as a 45 and a half point over under. And we get to see this Cleveland Browns defense chase Marcus Mariota around at home. So the Browns hype train finally pulls into the station. The Titans defense, I think, is, is pretty good. I think they're going to be, you know, at least the middle of the pack type of defense. Uh, we saw Baker struggle at the end of the preseason with none of his weapons, but Odell Beckham, he'll be out there, healthy, ready to go. The hip is not an issue. Jarvis Landry, Rashard Higgins, Nick Chubb, season two. And then uh, that sounded like a Netflix uh, series, mm -hmm. Nick Chubb, season two debut. And David and Joku will be out there as well. So um, what are the storylines that you see on the – Brown side of the ball, like confidence level with Beckham and, and Landry. I mean, the confidence level is where you drafted them, right? You 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 drafted them high. Uh, you know, you're you're talking about Odell Beckham being a back of the first, sec, early second round. This isn't the the Jaguars or the Bears or a team where you go. Oh, you know, even then, I I doubt you would. But this is this is a storyline where it's much more about what we get to see. And what you think you're going to see is 100% what you did in the draft. Because this isn't a matchup that's going to scare you away. It's a middle-of-the-road matchup. So if you were a believer in Nick Chubb, a believer in Jarvis Landry, a believer in Odell Beckham Jr. at your draft, prove it. 
Put them in yeah, the lineup them. and 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 watch them succeed. I am. Uh, I personally, this is the the one team. I was I was talking to Mike uh, yesterday. I want to watch the Browns more than any team. I'm the most interested. I'm probably the least bullish on them, but I'm also super excited. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope Baker just lights the league on fire. Now, would you say you're the least bullish because you overtly predicted their downfall? Would that be one of the reasons why you say that? That well, it, it, it opposite. The reason that I overtly predicted a and keep in mind on a bold prediction show that their ADPs were too high across the board. Sure, sure. Um, is because I am uh, I'm less bullish. Last year, Baker Mayfield was perfect in the red zone. Twenty touchdowns, no interceptions. It's ironic because you remember Marcus Mariota was like that to begin his right. career in Tennessee, and that's his opponent in this game. You heard it here first. Andy Holloway is <laughs> predicting the career of Marcus Mariota for Baker Mayfield. Uh, I don't think I said that, but okay. Uh, let's go to the Tennessee Titans side because this is, you know, is confidence levels cannot be high. No. With pretty much anybody here, but I know that, you know, Delaney Walker is going to be back out there. Derrick Henry. Yeah, strike that. I, I, I'm very confident in Delaney Walker, but the rest of the Titans offense. I do, I do not want to play the Browns defense even though they were giving up fantasy points last year. They are improved. I mean, you now have Miles Garrett, Sheldon Richardson, Olivier Vernon. Oh like, gosh. The the Browns are one of my defensive plays of the week. No doubt about it. At home, that crowd is going to be insane. And Derek, we have Derrick Henry on the fringe RB2 for the week because Derrick Henry is great when the Titans win. And he's bad when the Titans lose, and I don't see a very positive game script for Derrick Henry. Well, that, and that's a chicken or the egg situation because when he's had more than twelve rushing attempts over the last two seasons, the Titans are eleven and one. So he has been, you know, but you can only give a guy rushing attempts when you're in a positive game Certainly. script. So it's one of those things where I don't think any of us are extremely excited about the upside here of Derrick Henry because he may not be afforded the number of carries that we'd love to see. Last year, the Browns gave up the fifth most rushing yards in the league. But like you said, it's a different defensive front. It's a home game. Um, you like Delaney Walker. The Browns yes. gave up the sixth most, most fantasy points to tight ends last year. Delaney Walker should have a steady workload in this game, especially if it's a negative game script. So, so with, with Derrick Henry specifically, a lot of people were around the turn where they got a Derrick Henry and a Marlon Mack. Two very similar players. They need to be in winning games. Both are on the road. Both are projected to lose by Vegas. If you had to make the decision between those two players, where are you going? I would go Derrick Henry. I would go Derrick Henry. Yeah, I think I'll take the guaranteed workload there with Derrick Henry. I agree. The Marlon Mack will be on the road against the Chargers defense. Yeah. And and so, yeah, yeah, I think I'd go Henry. Henry may just not have the upside, but he's – Gonna get 15 carries, right? I mean, that's he should, but that could still turn into 32 yards. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's, we have, that's uh, the problem. We've I'm, seen it before, and I'm going Derrick Henry because it's just playing the game of probability. I think that the Titans have the chance to keep pace with the Browns, as in slow their offense down. I think that's gonna be it's gonna be tougher for the Colts. All right, before we talk about the Ravens and Dolphins, so the Ravens uh, <laughs> oh, want to thank today's sponsor, and I do want to thank. Today's sponsor from my heart. I'm talking about Omigo, my Omigo. That is a toilet seat bidet that has changed the way. Welcome to the welcome to the life, look, man. I look. I'll be honest, Foot Clan. When I first got my Omigo, it's it's different. I wasn't sure that I was going to continue using it. And holy moly, did that flip because <laughs> I cannot not use it. Like to the point where I made us yeah, get one. Yeah, you forced us to uh, for our studio get you a second one because I need them everywhere I go. Look, it washes you perfectly every time. You control everything: the temperature, the position, the pressure, the width, the movement, your t seat temperature. It's fantastic. I cannot live without my Omega. I'm only shaking my head because I know how much you love it. And I neither just... should you. Get 20% off your first order when you go to myomigo.com slash footballers. That's Omigo with an O, as in O. How did I ever live without this? Oh, nice. For better health and hygiene, stop wiping, start washing, 
you will be glad you switched. Again, that's myamigo.com slash footballers to get 20% off the toilet seat that's changing lives one wash at a time. Fantasy football is here. That means that FanDuel is also back in your life. There's more ways to win cash prizes and once-in-a-lifetime experiences during every single game, every single week. If you've never played on FanDuel before, that's great because new users are going to get $20 in site credit if they deposit 20 bucks. This week, you want in on the you, you want in on Derrick Henry and you didn't get him? Look, I'm not suggesting you do that, but maybe maybe that's your call. Maybe you want to start Baker Mayfield and you don't have him on any of your season long teams. FanDuel can make that happen. It's it's the perfect complement to your season long leagues. You can sign up uh, for FanDuel now and get that twenty dollars in total bonus. Just make your first deposit to get started, and you're gonna get that site or get five dollars in site credit every week for four weeks. Head to fanduel.com slash footballers. That's fanduel.com slash footballers. All right, the Ravens take on the Dolphins. Oh dear. It's in Miami, but the Dolphins are six and a half point underdogs. The the Vegas line's only 37 and a half points. If you look at the implied point total there, that would be uh, 22 points for the Ravens, 16 for the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, I just read a, an athletic article this morning. You know, there's a lot of articles coming out about projecting out the entire season and records for teams. They had the Dolphins at a cool 1 and 15. Oh, oh wow. So a little ge good. generous on the win total there for Miami. <laughs> Well, they're trusting the process, man. They certainly are, and I'm trusting the Ravens in this matchup without question. I think it's easy to get put off by the over-under number, that 37.5, uh, maybe because you know we're not expecting this to be a barn burner. We're not expecting Miami to be able to march it up and down the field against this Ravens defense, even though they're at home. Ryan Fitzpatrick will get the start. You'll see Lamar Jackson in his sophomore season. And we'll get to see Mark Ingram in a brand-new uniform. Uh, and he's got a great opportunity this week yes, against Miami. Uh, Mike, you're expecting pretty big things. Miami allowed the fourth-most running back rushing yards and third-most quarterback rushing yards last year. Yeah, the, the implied point total in the over-under for the Ravens, it doesn't matter because I'm not super excited to start pass catchers from the Ravens until Lamar Jackson proves that the quarterback – that that has – Throwing has actually improved. I'm not really interested. Mark Andrews is fine as a lower end tight end, but Sneed, uh, Miles Boykin, just any of the wide receivers, I'm, I have little, little to no interest. Yeah, you're not starting those guys, but this is a week where you want to keep your eyes on how Lamar Jackson is doing, what the offense looks like. How he's doing. Oh, yeah. oh, I got you. <laughs> it sounded weird. Yeah, I to just me. want to know, like, you know, is his day going okay? Yeah, no, is he feeling good? Yeah. Um, but after I know, you know, if he woke up on the right side of the bed, I want to see how Miles Boykin is performing on the field for football I, activities. I, I apologize. For yeah, no worries. Um, but yeah, I, I do. Miles Boykin is one of the guys I'm going to keep an eye on. The the only like this is a game I'm really excited about. Mark Ingram would have been my start of the week. If it wasn't for the obvious real start of the week. Um, but I would I, I think Mark Ingram's a must start and Gus Edwards and Justice Hill, if you're in a super deep league, you know, if you're playing yeah. with a lot of flex or fourteen, sixteen team league, these are sneaky players where I mean, if they're just running the ball for the whole second half, which that's what the Ravens want to do, they're going to share that around. Yeah. And I think you could get a sneaky snark. I would not – like, so Mark Andrews in this game, if he doesn't give you a huge performance, I'm not going to be surprised if they can win this game on the ground. I wouldn't overreact to pass catchers on Baltimore this week. And, uh, you know, Lamar Jackson, it will be very interesting. I brought it up yesterday. Warren Sharp talked about this. When he throws on first down, his success rate is nearly double compared to second and third down. He, he just – you know, when you're put in that position as a rookie – the must-throw scenario, you start to see blitzes that you're not familiar with, defensive formations you're not familiar with. So I want to see that mature this year for him. Last year from weeks 11 through 17, here were his fantasy point finishes, and all he needed was one passing touchdown for these weeks. 
to be a top 12 guy. 15, 20, 16, 18, 16, 18, 26. You never got this huge performance from Lamar Jackson last year, but you also were never let down. You were always okay to play him. I would expect something more in these yes. sc scoring totals because he's not going to be stressed as much to throw the football. Um, so we've talked about the Ravens. You know, Mike, you're going to talk about Mark Ingram more later. On the other side of the ball, you know, the unofficial official, I guess it's the official depth chart that is kind of maybe put out more by a PR team than the head coach. But Kenyon Drake, there's some positive momentum here for Kenyon Drake. He's listed as number one on the depth chart. There were some reports from beat writers that he's going to touch the ball a ton. So what do you do with Kenyon Drake in week one? Hopefully you don't have to play him. Yeah, I mean, he, he dropped a little bit in draft, so it's possible that he's your running back three or maybe even your four. So hopefully you don't have to play him. I, I, things are going to be better for Kenyon Drake over, over the season. I like how the, they're talking about you know getting him a bunch of touches, but week one against the Ravens is, is not very interesting to me. So Kenyon Drake at home against the Ravens, we've got him on the running back three fringe edge. Rashad Penny above him at home against Cincinnati. Uh, Jordan Howard with the committee above him in our rankings right now for week one. Because of the game scripts where both like both Penny and Chris Carson could have monster games. and Both Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders could have huge games. They're, they're in very positive matchups. The biggest over-under in the week is the Monday night game, Saints-Houston. Would you play Latavius Murray or Kenyon Drake? Latavius Murray. Ooh. But I, that, I mean, that's close. I and you know, don't hear what I'm not saying because I still love uh, Kenyon Drake. I I would be willing to make a cheap trade offer for him. His value is very low right now. Nobody's looking to start him this week against Baltimore. Um, and I still think he. I think that the talent will win out over Balage in that backfield. And in general, you're you're not going to be super happy because I don't think the Dolphins are going to score a lot of points all season long. But that's not to say he can't be an important flex player for your roster. What happens emotionally to you, Mike, if Ryan Fitzpatrick comes out in week one at home and torches the Baltimore Ravens <laughs> and is the number one fantasy quarterback for a second straight year after week one? What would happen to my emotional yeah, what state? Would, I mean, would you come in with the glasses and the chain, shirtless, would, I, would you be happy to see this happen, or would you? Oh, be, would I? I would. I would be ecstatic. Absolutely, this, that would be fantastic because that's great for football. Sorry, Baltimore, a little uh, your fans, but if Ryan Fitzpatrick does it again, does it with this ragtag motley crew against the Ravens, against defense? the Ravens, then it's just it's fantastic. It also would mean that the bird alert himself, Albert Wilson, had a good game. Well, just remember last year, Week One. It was against – I mean, their terrible team yes. was against the unbelievably difficult to score on New Orleans Saints. And he put up 48 points. Go get him, Fitzpatrick. We're all rooting for you, buddy. We are, except except for the coaching staff. Like, the GM of the Dolphins will be screaming, no, get Rosen in there. Well, I said one in 15, so week one could be that one. All right, no, fair enough. Not projecting the upset. All right, let's move on to the Bills taking on the Jets. The Jets are three-point home favorites. Andy's almost upset of the week. I like it. I actually picked the Bills to win this game. Yeah, I think the Bills do win this game, and that's not to say I'm not optimistic about what the, the New York Jets have in terms of fantasy production this year. I think Robbie Anderson... We all like his future, but right now he's dealing with, you know, barely getting back from an injury. Uh, it's a very difficult matchup for him against Tredavious White, one of the best cornerbacks in football. The Buffalo Bills last year, they were so far and away the best team when it came to, you know, fantasy points against at the quarterback position. They dominated. Fantasy quarterbacks last year, 12.7 points on a weekly basis. That was first in the league they were number one in terms of not giving up you know fantasy points to the tight end position and right now the Jets don't even have their best tight end in Chris Herndon to start the year due to the suspension they were fourth against 
you know, fantasy wide receivers. This is a good defense. Yes. I think they can travel. Defense, you know, they say defense travels. And uh, it's an interstate battle here. And I think the Bills, they, they get this win. Josh Allen and company with his new toys at wide receiver, John Brown, Cole Beasley. Yeah. Um, we'll see that backfield we talked about earlier. So uh, let's let's talk about the fantasy storyline number one to me, which is what happens to Le'Veon Bell? Yes. What kind of workload does he receive? I think there were some comments yesterday. From Bell? From Bell. Yes. Saying he literally told the team, give me as much as you can. Yeah, he's got his money. He doesn't. He wants 50 touches, guys. If he I goes want in, him to have 50 touches as well. <laughs> I mean, certainly. Look, this is actually a good, this is a really good matchup for him. While you brought up how great the Bills were against the passing game, they weren't that good against the run last year. Now, we can't use last year's data. There's so much change over on, you know, a team level for a defense. But some of those things still will be in play. A lot of the same uh, players, obviously, same regime running the show. So this is a home game where you are projected to win. And if you lose, if, if you're right that the Bills win, I don't expect it to be a blowout, no. you know, barn burner type. So that means Lev Bell's going to be able to get the ball all game long at home against a team that they allow you to beat them on the run. They don't want you to beat them through the air so I think look if, if I mean obviously everyone's playing love bell that drafted him but I think he gets off to a start a strong start this week hmm. yeah I think he probably scores I mean the bills they gave up 17 touchdowns to running backs last year um, that is the one area that they were beatable they are at home pace of play is going to be a problem for fantasy production that's what I'm watching for is did Adam Gaze learn anything from this preseason when his team and specifically his quarterback looked outstanding when they were playing at a high rate of speed because as the head coach of Miami in his whole tenure there they were they were last in pace of play but not just last but outrageously outrageously on the bottom when it outrageously came, yes. last outrageously like Jason's last. league of record team outrageously oh, get body outrageous outrageously so, super does he does he turn that around because he feels like he has the talent to actually run a faster pace of play. And so, Mike, you're, you're kind of off of Robbie Anderson in week one yeah. with the matchup. Yeah, what about I the Bills' wide receivers? John Brown, Cole Beasley, Zay Jones. You know, Josh Allen goes on the road in this game. He's our consensus QB 22 in week one. Um, you know, a traveling Josh Allen, other options that we like better. Yeah. What do you expect from the Bills' offense? I'm fine playing Josh Allen. I'm in fact I'm doing that in a few leagues at the running back position. I'm going to let it sort itself out first. Even if you got overexcited and spent the high draft pick on Devin Singletary, I'm not putting him out here in week one. I I want to see what they're going to do. And the the nice thing about the wide receivers, I think John Brown could have a a fine game, and we'll see if those targets actually keep going for Cole Beasley or not. But you took him so late in the draft that you aren't forced to make that decision this week, which is nice. So uh, the only the only Buffalo Bill player I am starting is Josh Allen. I think that the Bills are a perfect wait-and-see situation for fantasy. There are some teams that you have a more guaranteed understanding of what's going to happen. I want to see what this wide receiver distribution looks like on this on this roster. So... I'm not, you know, I think there are better options than Josh Allen in week one, but I'm optimistic on the season. Any other thoughts in this matchup, Jason, before we move on? Uh, no, I, I echo what Mike was saying, and I think because of the rushing baseline, while you might not get one of those top five performances out of Josh Allen, I think he is going to be relatively safe. All right, the Redskins travel to Philly to take on the Eagles. The Eagles are nine and a half point favorites. It's a 45 and a half point over under in this game. Now, while I am not predicting an upset, this is the kind of game that jumps off the page to me as maybe something different happens here than we're all expecting because there's not a lot of positivity around the Redskins, the offense, the uh, the newness of the wide receiver core. You know, you, you had an injured Trey Quinn last year. You Now you got Terry McLaurin in there. You don't have Josh Doxson. Jordan Reed's in the concussion protocol. Case Keenum's the starter. But somehow, someway, this is the National Football League. And games like this, interdivision, they end up a lot closer than you think they will. 
And uh, because these teams, you know, the matchups, the way they prepare for one another, I all I'm saying is I, I would take the Redskins in the points. Yeah, when, that's where I. It is that's a where lot I would of points, be. but <laughs> if the offensive line for Washington, like it's it's a problem, and the Eagles pass rush and their depth at pass rush. I mean, they can just they can have guys take two snaps and then rotate in new players, and on the left side. Uh, the left side of Washington's line is not going to be able to hold up against the backups for Philadelphia. So I I get it taking the nine and a half points because that's generally I will take that. But Washington's in big trouble yeah, this I, week. I, I, look, I, I could see them even covering the nine and a half. Maybe, maybe they don't. But the point that you're making here, Mike, from a fantasy perspective is this line is the way that it is because Philadelphia's defense matches up with Washington's offense very well. There could very well be a defensive score. So, obviously, if you drafted the Eagles, you should be playing them. But that takes away a little bit from the passing game. You know, if if the Eagles go out there and get a pick six or a fumble return for a touchdown, is score in, in that manner, that takes away a little bit from the need to pass the ball from your Alshon Jeffries and Deshaun Jacksons. So, while it looks on paper home, huge, uh, you know, uh, favor, uh, favored uh, score that huge was favorite. Well, well, the word is said. The word is <laughs> favorite. A huge favorite. I, really? That not seems a, too not easy. Not a huge favored score, my friend. I saw a man. <laughs> like, a huge favorite. You were Hans Gruber at the end of <laughs> Die Hard, just slowly <laughs> grasping. Please, words. Somebody yeah. help me. Yeah. And, then, and, and we then, let you and then, fall. I was going to say, Andy yelled down <laughs> as I landed on the pavement. Hey, dummy! It's, it's favorite. favorite. <laughs> uh, Twenty-seven and nineteen is the implied point total in the game. I think you're right about the defense, but uh, Zach Ertz is fine. Of course, yeah, Zach Ertz is fine. I'm st I'm still playing Alshon. Yeah, I can say Alshon Jeffries are consensus wide receiver twenty-three on yeah. the week. Mike's fancy over here. Yeah, that was a weird pronunciation. Alshon. Al Alshon. <laughs> <laughs> He's French now. What's the name we of are what's, apart. what's Urkel's uh like, Stefan. Oh, is this when he goes Stephane? in the machine? Yeah. Yes. And he becomes But it's pronounced in the same fashion as your Alshon. Yes. Okay. <laughs> A nice Urkel <laughs> reference to get your week started. Also can't wait for my Dallas Goddard touchdown. Um it yeah. could happen. All right, running backs. Darius Geis, Adrian Peterson. No. Miles Sanders, Jordan Howard. Yes. <laughs> That's that, well said. <laughs> okay. Analysis complete. Um Nelson Aguilar. A sneaky flex play this week? Huh? Huh? I, th huh? I think he's huh? a sneaky play uh. throughout the season because people aren't paying any attention to him whatsoever, and he will be a very uh, targeted wide receiver over the course of the season. Is this the matchup for it? I don't think so. I'd rather play him in a game that I think is going to be uh, a two-way street where they're going to have to throw the ball, maybe catch back up. You know, If, if this was the, the Chiefs, I'd be talking about Aguilar as a great – you know, sneaky play. I think that the Redskins are going to be forced into comeback mode. And if that's the case, sneaky Trey Quinn this week. Case Keenum sure. lives his life between one and 10 yards away from wherever he is. That's what he P -P does. PPR only. I mean, yeah, of course. And this you're deeply only, I wouldn't be taking that risk, but case Keenum threw the ball 10 yards or less on 74% of his attempts. That's the third highest in football. It's where he's very comfortable. He's going to have no choice. If you moved his mailbox 11 yards away from his house, he would never receive the mail. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. He wouldn't be able to get it. You know, you, you want to talk a sneaky start here, and yes. this probably isn't for your home leagues. This is maybe for <laughs> or, like a DFS cash play or something where you're trying to super yeah. not be chalk. But Vernon Davis, he's still, sure. he's still got juice. He does. And if Jordan Reed is out and they're playing catch up, he, he, uh, tight end landscape is terrible. All right, the Chiefs travel to Jacksonville. Tough week one matchup against the Jags. The Jags are three-and-a-half-point home underdogs. It's a 52-point over-under, and we get to see Patrick Mahomes take the field, the MVP of football, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, the debut of McCole Hardman at wide receiver, and then whether or not LaShawn McCoy is active, we'll see Damian Williams, Darwin Thompson, and company is there – how are you approaching the Chiefs this week? Is it simply sure. with measured expectations, Mike? Because I can't imagine you're sitting any of them, but you also have to realize you know, Tyreek Hill and Sammy Watkins have very, very difficult matchups this week. 
You know, you have to deal with Jalen Ramsey, arguably the best cornerback in the league. A.J. Bouye against Sammy Watkins is not a good matchup. And so you start to look at Travis Kelsey and the pass catching out of the backfield. I think that that would be your, you know, your most excited there. Yeah, it, you're playing Tyreek Hill. I'm still playing Sammy Watkins, the Lizard King himself. And, of course, you're playing Travis Kelsey. I think the more interesting discussion is the running back position because of the, the addition of Shady – the, the hints at a timeshare, this isn't the week that I believe that happens. LaShawn McCoy just got to the team. He's He'll get up to speed quicker because it's Andy Breed, but I believe if you drafted Damian Williams, you can start him with full confidence. The matchup sucks, but at least it's, he's still the starting running back for Patrick Mahomes and an Andy Reid offense. Last year, the Jags were number one in football in terms of uh, the least amount of fantasy points given up to the wide receiver position. They only gave up 22 total fantasy points a game uh, to the position that, you know, they didn't face Patrick Mahomes every week, but they did face him at the end of the year and he threw zero touchdowns against him. So uh, it'll be very interesting to see what happens here. Obviously Vegas thinks it'll be a high scoring affair, but I just don't know. This is a team what? that, you know, you could have some overreaction here. Like, if Sammy Watkins comes out and gets shut down, I will not be surprised. But I think that would be a overreaction to, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, moving into weeks two, three for Sammy. Yeah, I mean, I look – I don't been, even like him. I've been the biggest Sammy supporter, and I – in on my own roster this week, I have taken Sammy out of the lineup, put Dante Pettis in, assuming his groin is good to go, because ah, 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 my groin. Um, you know, so that's an example of, you know, he he's not a must start every week. This is a terrible matchup. Now on the flip side, you want to you want sneaky players when you're very talking, interesting. The Jaguars' offense looks really appetizing to me. <laughs> to put it in my worldview, you could eat them up. I could just eat all these sausages up and cook my <laughs> eggs and my bacon, have a wonderful breakfast with. Look, I love Dee Dee Westbrook. Hans Gruber. <laughs> I love yes Leonard Fournette, and I am totally fine. You know, we talk about streamers. You don't need it week one, um, but Nick oh. Foles would have been my stream of the week okay. here in a matchup against Kansas City. You, you, we haven't seen what the Jaguars are going to do. You've talked, Mike, about how they could actually pass more than we think. In the, in the sense that, you know, they got a new OC that is known for passing. They paid a new quarterback not to come in and just hand the ball off. So I'm interested in, in the Jaguars' offensive pieces. And by the pieces, I'm pretty much meaning Leonard Fournette, D.D. Westbrook, and possibly Nick Foles. What's, what's wild about this matchup is the 52-point over-under. It's very high, but it's only – they're, they're only dogs by three points. So clearly the, the sharp people in Vegas – they're expecting Jacksonville to put up points, and I am very infatuated with Dede Westbrook this week. I think it'll but it will take, be interesting to see which other guys on the team actually step up and make some plays. Yeah, last year, again, not prescriptive, but last year the Chiefs' defense obviously very, very bad. I mean, yeah. part of that's a product of like the offense, like just scores so often, pace of play, tons of points. You give up a lot of garbage time yardage, but you. At the same time, I think they've improved the defense. It's one of the reasons I like them to go to the Super Bowl, but I think it's going to take time. Tyran Matthew on the back end. Um, I, I, it's going to take some time for that defense to kind of figure things out. I was going to I was going to bring up the Honey Badger. Tyron Matthew, uh, I wish we knew how he was going to be used before this game. Is he going to come down and try to be used as a slot cover? You know, and it, Could he get in the way of D.D. Westbrook a little bit? Because that is a new addition and an important new addition. He's, he's looked great in camp uh, when he's been out there healthy, at least. So... You know, yeah, like you said, it's not exactly prescriptive what they did last year. And really, we can't help you a lot with saying, okay, it's a tough matchup. Because if you drafted Patrick Mahomes, you're playing him. If you drafted Tyreek Hill, you're playing him. The real decisions are, are, are Sammy Watkins, uh, pretty much, and Damian Williams. And Mike, I you, would you said it. You'd play Damian yes. Williams week one. I would as well. Okay. Right now, where is he, Brooks? Where Consensus week one. Damian Williams, do you have that uh, up? I ha I don't have the entire consensus up, but uh, Damian Williams is my running back 16, so he's still an RB2 okay. this week. All right. Uh, the Rams take on the Carolina Panthers. Jared Goff hey. just got paid. Jared? <laughs> Carolina, two-and-a-half-point home underdogs. 
we were looking at some numbers. Look, Jared Garf himself. <laughs> yes. Jared Garf on the road. Ugh. Uh, it's not been good. No. Nope. Uh, you know, um, he's got a league leading 10 plus adjusted yards per attempt at home. It drops to 6.77 on the road, which is uh, uh, Brock Osweiler territory. His completion percentage drops from 68% to 60% on the road. Touchdown to interception ratio uh, from 22 to 3 at home goes to 10 to 9 on the road. It, it's more difficult. I mean, this is this is not exclusive to Jared Goff. I mean, you go on the road, difficult situation. But particularly heading to Carolina, how do you see this thing breaking down? Where's your confidence level with Jared Garf himself? I am. I'm. I'm fine playing Jared Garf. I think that. <laughs> I just. I want people to write in and say. I do. I want them to write in. Um, it's Goff, you idiots, you dummies. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Jared Garf. At oh, this, introducing. <laughs> um. Here's the thing. Look, I know that he had several bad games down the the stretch. Some of those road games are misnomers where they – I mean, especially at the end of the year when C.J. Anderson was running in like 10 touchdowns a game. Yeah, it just so happened that those weren't the games that Jared Goff was throwing the touchdowns. And also, there is a lot skewed. I know it's not all the Bears game, but that Bears game, super cold weather on the road against the best defense in the league – was a catastrophe, a complete collapse. He threw for 180 yards, four interceptions, and zero touchdowns. That skews the numbers, and now I'm going to cede the mic over to Mike because so we need a breaking news button. Uh oh, uh oh, oh, we do. Yeah. Breaking news. This is from Shefty. Antonio Brown and GM Mike Mayock got into it Wednesday. The team is now planning to suspend its star wide receiver. The wizard, the wizard of Oz <laughs> is a crazy man behind the curtain. Holy crap. I am selling yesterday's question <laughs> of over 100 yards receiving for Antonio Brown. And also, fire up your Darren Waller. Oh, pick up Waller. We saw Jared Cook when he was the only pick show in up. town. Darren Waller, now my start of the week. <laughs> Claim, let me scroll down here. Dude, this is just ridiculous. He's an insane person. Look, he, yeah, uh, he's he needs some help. See, Mike, you tried to convince me yesterday that he was crazy like a fox with this whole with hel the helmet thing. With the helmet thing, he's not crazy like a fox. He's crazy like a crazy. He needs some people in his life to help him out. No, but all he has is money. He looks around, he just finds money. This I mean, is just ridiculous. Look. You're about to make Benjamin your Franklin was a smart guy. He could get good advice from all of his Benjamins. <laughs> if he speaks to the money itself? Well, that's what you're saying he has in his life. It's just it's he, it's really unfortunate because this was not the player that you know was in camp, was in the locker room 6 7 years ago. It's not the same player. He had a very uh Jerry Rice like persona. For many years, hardest worker in the league, kept his head down, uh, you know, breaking records. And now, I mean, is he addicted to the to the Twitter sphere? I mean, I don't understand I, what's going on. I mean, my honest take is I think he has concussion problems. Like if you remember that hit he took from Vontae's perfect, where That's perfect scary. was claiming he didn't have a concussion. But if you watched Antonio Brown. Not many guys get hit like that. I mean, that's that's why I'm saying. Like, I think Antonio Brown's friends need to find him some help. The the thing that's so difficult is how good of a player he is, mixed with like this altercation. Like, I it's breaking on the show. I don't I don't have any more information than than Adam Schefter's tweet. Right, and it's breaking on the show. And and you don't know how Antonio Brown responds to a suspension. Does he show up in week two? Does he rebel against this suspension? Does he ever play for the Raiders? Yeah, because yesterday the it wasn't huge news, but it was Brown was he had IG'd that he was mad that the team was fining him for skipping some practices. This this is bad news for the Oakland Raiders and Antonio Brown, but I still like to spin it very positively. Pick up Darren Waller. Well, and, and you, you need to mention Tyrell Williams. Yes, sure. You know, that, no, it's not just Darren Waller. Tyrell Williams, 
will inherit a ton of targets from the proposed Antonio Brown situation. Williams has been great in camp, been great in the preseason. That also means, look, uh, Kyle Borgognoni, our uh, <laughs> editor-in-chief over here who does some – he's just a beast, does great work, great research. Also one of the best dishes at Olive Garden. Oh, yes. Um, he uh, <laughs> He did some research okay. on vacated targets and found that it is pretty prescriptive to say that teams with large vacated targets – the first season following that num you know the higher numbers they tend to target the running back a lot more pretty much across the board so it, this yeah is, josh uh josh jacobs. josh jacobs also should be a beneficiary here because they're going to need to dump that ball off all over the place all right we got to get to starts of the week and we got to wrap up this rams panthers matchup that got uh once again you know antonio brown he doesn't care. He will disrupt anything you're doing. He will do that. For team or for podcast. He's like, wait, are they not talking about me right now? Goodness uh, gracious. We can make it pretty quick. The Rams, I'm starting all three wide receivers. The You're confident with Cooper Cup in week one. That's, I, the, that's the part that I think yes. people will want to know the most because it's first week back from the ACL. They just paid Higby and they got Everett. And do they... Do they lower the reps for Cooper Cup coming back into to week one? I'm not as confident as you on the road. It's look. It's certainly possible, but I would I would still start him. I I think you'll get enough work with with that high opportunity to score. What I am fascinated to watch is from the Rams side. Does Todd Gurley come out and have a monster week one, and the victory lap from the the Todd Gurley truthers will be, uh, it will it will be incredible. Well, it's not a great matchup if things hold true to last year. Panthers were definitely top 10 against the run. They were beatable through the air. So this should be one where Robert Woods, Brandon Cooks, Cooper Cup, they are all okay, including Jared Goff. I am fine with Jared Goff. Obviously, if you drafted him, you're probably going to be starting right. him. Same with Cam Newton on the other side of the ball. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey's a go. The real question is, are you fine week one? You know, there's a lot of breakout potential here for DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel. Those two guys' names, they get talked about all over the place. Huge breakout potential this year. But are you going to take that shot week one, or do you wait and see with these guys? Yeah, I you know my rankings say I'm waiting, and and seeing what what you have in Curtis Samuel. Yeah, if, I agree. If you have the luxury to wait, you've got other good options. Go well, ahead and wait. And you you probably do right. I mean the 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 value of Curtis Samuel in drafts meant that maybe he's a flex play for you. Maybe he's not. Maybe you drafted Some him leagues. in the range where you're making that decision. So depending on where you got him. I don't mind the play at all. Like I don't. If you need to play DJ Moore or Curtis Samuel, they should be the primary pass catchers for Cam Newton at home. But I'm I I would love advanced knowledge of what's going to happen, you know. And and you don't get that. So um, Cam Newton, you're confident in in this matchup? Yes, he's start him up. He's back. He's ready to go. This Christian McCaffrey youngster, decent play this week. Yep. All right, we're gonna need to move on. We're gonna get into all the other matchups tomorrow. It's time for the starts. Starts of the week. All right. Week one starts of the week. We'll begin at the quarterback position, and I'll let the fantasy hitman himself kick it off. Ooh, it's me. Look, my, my start of the week at the quarterback position, it's, it's Jameis Winston, the over-under on this game of Tampa Bay and San Francisco is absolutely bananas. And on top of that, it's it, last time I saw it, it was a pick em. So I expect huge things from both San Francisco and Tampa Bay. They both have uh, bad defenses. Things could certainly change from last year. I just don't see that really happening. And San Francisco, they allowed the fifth most points per game last year. So I, I love it. Jameis was a, a late round guy you could take, and this is a sm a smash place for Jameis. All right, uh, Jason, who do you have at your quarterback start of the week? So uh, I'm I'm going a little deeper here. Those two quarterback leagues, you want to know, you know the the matchup play. I like Kirk Cousins. There's so much information about running the ball, and this is a matchup against the Falcons that can actually score on the Vikings. It's not a prime time game, so I think Kirk Cousins will be okay. Now, if it turns out that he doesn't have Stephon Diggs, then I would pivot. I would I would move to I mean I would play Jameis over Kirk either way, but I think if he's a full go with 
both Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs. I think Kirk Cousins comes out, has a, a really solid performance week one. He was pretty great for a lot of the year last season, especially early on, and we tend to forget that. All right, and I'll go outside the top 12 on the week and go with Kyler Murray against Detroit. It, it, it's not a name that I want to bring up and get accused of being a homer repeatedly on, but it's the play of the week for me. He's at home. We know the collegiate resume. We know last year over 1,000 yards rushing, 12 touchdowns on the ground. The Cardinals have a – what I'm – what I've written in our doc is a disgusting defense. There are going to be loads of opportunities for Kyler, garbage time opportunities. You know, they're going to have to, they're going to have to win a shootout in this, in this matchup. And we, I'm excited to see the very pass heavy, very play heavy Cliff Kingsbury offense in week yeah. one. Um, I think Kyler Murray this year is going to have more passing attempts per game than most quarterbacks in football. And then you get to put, the rushing yardage on top of it, and we know, you know, in a four-point touchdown league, every forty yards is a touchdown for the quarterback. Every in a six-point league, every sixty yards is a touchdown when you're on the ground. And I, I was there for Cam Newton's debut game in the oh. NFL. Four hundred plus passing yards, had a rushing touchdown in his debut as an NFL rookie in 2011. That sounds like the line that Matt Stafford's about to put up. It's very, on Arizona. it's very positive. The Cardinals' defense, it's they're bad. It's depleted. Yes. And I don't trust Vance Joseph to it, make it not – he can't make it not depleted. It he can't be, scheme his way into that. It could be the worst in the league with their two starting cornerbacks, including Patrick Peterson, which they have neither of them. Yes. So, Kyler Murray started the week at the quarterback position. I'll go right into my running back start of the week. Let's unleash the beast. Sony Michelle against Pittsburgh. They are at home. They are six-point favorites. The Patriots running backs averaged 103 rushing yards per game last year, and the Steelers gave up 96 a game. I don't expect this, you know, do I think the Pittsburgh Steelers linebackers are going to improve this year? I do, but week one in New England's a tough task at hand. So I think we see Sonny Michel kind of continue his yes. playoff performance into week one. Um, on the other side of the ball, I think James Conner has a struggling week one against the uh, nope. Patriots defense. You, so. Look, if you want to take a week one L against James Conner, we can, we can do this every week. Can we week. return to this? Yes. I, I think James Conner is going to have a good week one. Yes, we, we'll, we certainly so, we'll talk so about that. So let's figure out the bet because I think James Conner struggles in week one. Patriots struggles can, how? Like not top 15 type of running back on the week? Or sure. Oh, yeah. Done. Oh, done. I'm in. Both of us. Yeah. Water bet. I was in before the buzzer. There you go. It's there official. Go. All right. Uh, run, my running back start of the week, it's real easy. Mark Ingram, he's playing Miami. They give up the second most rushing yards per game. 145 rushing yards per game. Ravens heavy favorites. That one, there's, there's not much else that needs to be said there. Yeah, for me, uh, we got the drop ready. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Look. If he comes out and stinks week one, if he has a great week one. What are you I'm, doing? No, no, no. I'm saying oh. I'm getting all of that feedback on my Twitter. So he might as well be my start of the week. And also, uh. it's not just for that. It's for the fact that the Arizona Cardinals defense was terrible. But their offense could be great. So that just means more pace of play, more offensive opportunities for the Lions. They are on the road, and they are favored by Vegas. This should be a carry-on Johnson uh, feast. It really should be. It should be. It really should so be. So I'm, I'm, look, I'm taking the ride, and uh, hopefully right. I'm landing at the top of the mountain, playing the flag very high. All right. I will uh, piggyback on Mike's quarterback start of the week. I'm going Chris Godwin at wide receiver. Nice. I believe Bruce Arians will come out and establish what this offense is against San Francisco, uh, which is basically an offense with three pass-catching options, and one of them is Chris Godwin. He'll be peppered with targets. How first, dare you? First eight. A Goomba Wale is coming for everyone. I don't see that week one, Mike. I'll go Godwin over a Goomba Wale. All right. Uh, the 49ers secondary gave up a passer rating of 105 a year ago. 35 touchdown passes, which, which was second worst in the league. Gave up 25 points a game. Love that 50-point over-under. Give me some Godwin in week one. All right. My start of the week. I, look, I said if you've got the opportunity – to wait and see, and you've got great options, go ahead. But I actually think you can start Curtis Samuel this week. If you look at the actual matchups, I don't think they're going to be viewing him as the one. This is a very, very high score 
uh, in Vegas over under. He's at home. You haven't seen him yet. So if you want a sneaky high upside play, like I could see a situation where Curtis Samuel comes out week one and is a top 10 wide receiver in the NFL because he has a bomb touchdown. He's lightning fast. His routes are great. So uh, if you want a high upside play, that's why I'm making him my start of the week. He, you know, we, we haven't seen it yet. So it's risky, but uh, give me those diabetes. <laughs> I uh, hope somebody – I mean, there, there are new listeners that have no idea what on earth you mean. Keep listening. You'll catch on, my friends. All right. Okay. So my, my, you, my, my you, live, you live a very <laughs> sugar dance, predictive life. That is true. Okay. My wide receiver start of the week. My sweetie, Didi. Didi Westbrook, he's in an unbelievable situation. He already looks like Nick Foles' favorite target. Nick Foles favors the slot wide receiver even before having Didi Westbrook on his team as the primary pass catcher. The game script is incredibly in favor of Nick Foles having to throw the ball a ton. The Jaguars will not be able to slow this game down and try and grind it out with Fournette. This is a game they're going to have to pass, so I love Didi. Yeah, you have to. And uh, you're My sweetie. He's your sweetie. Didi's your sweetie. Sweetie Didi. Um, I just love – I'm mean, we're in the CBS Telethon League uh -huh. uh, where we, we had the St. Jude draft and and uh, it, we're playing it through for the whole season and, and simultaneously, you know, Hunter Renfro just got picked up by Jake Seeley in that league. Oh. That's the Antonio Brown reaction, Hunter Renfro. Uh, the I, accountant. Yes, the, <laughs> the state farm agent. All right. Oh, <laughs> All goodness. Right. One more. Tight end start of the week. I'm going with Jared Cook. Debut, okay. debut game against Houston, biggest over-under on the week. The Texans allowed six receiving touchdowns to tight ends last year in the red zone. That's an area where Cook was frequently targeted. To me, this is all about the big play, and that is what the tight end landscape is. Somebody wrote in, there was like a five-minute uh, period of time on the website where I had misformatted our tight end rankings page, and it was all disrupted, and somebody wrote in, they go, the tight ends page is all disgusting. I, I assume you did this as a reflection of the tight end landscape. <laughs> Uh, the thing this is, is a statement. <laughs> this is. I'm expecting a big play from Jared Cook in this game. Houston's linebackers, their DBs, they missed tackles at an alarming rate last year. One missed tackle, and you give up a monstrous play. And Jared Cook's going to feast in his debut game, which he owns week one anyway. Yes, Jared, he does. Jared Cook yes. loves week one of the he NFL does. season. It's the weeks two through 17 he, he has trouble with from time to time. Jared Cook, start oh, that, of the week. That is a good reminder. He does always come out week he really one does. and dominate. I am uh, genuinely pivoting to Darren Waller. He is my start of the week this week. If Antonio Brown is not there, if you watched Hard Knocks or paid attention in the offseason, all the camp buzz was always Darren Waller. He's unbelievable. He's so good. Nobody can guard him. Then you go to Hard Knocks. They're asking different players, who's the surprise? The players are saying, dude, it's Darren Waller. This guy's amazing. You watch the preseason. He looks great. He's always open. He's a, 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 a freakishly talented physical specimen. And and then on this last Hard Knocks episode, you actually, if you caught it, when Gruden was talking about his offense for a second, he said, my offense runs through the tight end. Well, that's Darren Waller. That was after they, they gave Luke Wilson the boot. So, uh, yeah, Darren Waller, I think he's going to have a very good game, and you can probably pick him up off of waivers. So if you've got a disgusting uh, tight end, and you want to... Now, are you, are you confident if Antonio Brown is not suspended? Because he is. It's, it's all planning to suspend right now. If Antonio Brown's out there, are you comfortable with Darren Waller? Would you ask our listeners to pivot, or would you say stick with it because of you know week one upside if you don't have a good tight end? I mean, a lot of people out there on our advice drafted Darren Waller. I would just go ahead and play him. I was going to play him with Antonio Brown at that level. Waller he over Andrews? But he, if Antonio... That would be like an, if Antonio Brown is gone then I would go Waller over Andrews. I might yes, go, I I might go Waller in either situation. I yeah, like I, I like that pick. I like it, Jason. Thanks. Mike, you close us out. All right, my stream or my start of the week at the tight end position. It's old man Delaney Walker. Yes, it's, it's, look, it's my turn it's, now. It's, it's not a sexy pick. It's not fun to have pieces Marcus, of the Tennessee. I'm open. <laughs> oh, I spit out my teeth. <laughs> That's 35-year-old Delaney Walker. Yes. 30, I hey, am that's older. how old I am. Yeah. Ooh, I haven't been talking the right so, way for years. Just a reminder. You need to go Dumbledore, apparently. Before last year where he was, he got hurt halfway through week one, he had played, He had received over 100 targets four straight years, 
And last year, in that game where he barely played 50% of the snaps in week one, he already had seven targets. Yep. Delaney Walker is Marcus Mariota's go-to guy. Mr. Mariota! It's, it's bland. It's boring. It doesn't have that upside feeling of, of someone like Darren Waller, but Delaney Walker is going right. to be Cus safe. Let's get to the main event. You're going Lubies for week one with Delaney Walker. Is that what you're saying? Look, they got great roast beef. <laughs> All right. Uh, we do have one final segment. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Let's start the year off without getting too nuts. Go with the sure thing week one with the Saints kicker, Will Lutz. That sounds pretty locked and loaded, Jason. Oh, it's pretty I mean, it's, uh, boom, it's boom, hundred percent guaranteed, ironclad. All right, we'll be back with more matchups tomorrow. More injury updates, probably more Antonio Brown news. Yeah. Uh, quick uh, thank you to our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Listen, head over to pristineauction.com. Use the registration code Ballers. A signed DeAndre Hopkins jersey yesterday, sixty-eight dollars goodness that is a steal on a deandre hopkins jersey uh head over there pristineauction.com uh that is it for today's show freaking antonio brown what are you doing man hey let's play football we'll talk to you tomorrow foot clan thanks for tuning in enjoy tonight's game yeah buddy see you tomorrow goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And a reminder, today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Muggsy Jeans, the most comfortable men's jeans ever made. That is not an exaggeration. Their high-tech fabrics are so soft and flexible. They literally feel as comfortable as sweatpants. Do your legs a favor and head to Muggsy.com. Grab your own pair of ridiculously comfortable jeans today. Listeners can use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. That is M-U-G-S-Y.com with the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off your pair of Muggsy jeans.